Listen, man, I remember when these movies came out. I must have been about 23 or so. I was on the five-year plan for college, right? So I think I just got out. That was a different time, brother. The world was a different place. No smartphones. I remember the first time I saw that scene right at the beginning of the second movie where Smeagol and Deagle are just chilling in the woods, just two bros out there fishing, having a bit of a laugh at the stream. Then the ring gets involved, right? I think it's an allegory for when dudes hit puberty. Suddenly they're fighting over ladies. But maybe I'm overthinking this. Anyways, man, the absolute savagery of that scene, this young fisherman took a life, brother, with his bare hands. He didn't go out fishing that day thinking he was going to murder his best friend, but that's the call of the ring, dude. Maybe it was just his nature the whole time. The ring just brought out the true Smeagol. So listen, man, if you're watching this and you feel like you want some off-the-beaten-path Magic the Gathering content, then hit all the buttons, buddy. You gotta subscribe to the channel. That's how you get more of this old guy and his Lord of the Rings story time fun time. Thanks also to my recent supporters. We got Banana Jones out there. We got Rua, Alex L, and of course, Tyler. Thanks a lot, you mooks. So in the new set, Smeagol gets his own card, and it turns out it's a bit of a surprise landfall and aristocrat powerhouse. Golgari always seems to surprise mechanically. Every time I see a new Golgari commander, I'm like, what the heck's going on with this guy? Well, I'm going to tell you, we got Smeagol Helpful Guide, one black and a green for a legendary creature, Halfling Horror. It's a 4-2. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died under your control this turn, the ring tempts you. Whenever the ring tempts you, target opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into their graveyard. The art on this is spot on, right? Smeagol's pretending to help the little hobbits. And as so brilliantly shown in the movie, he's torn between a genuine sense of kinship with Frodo and his desire to retrieve the ring. The showcase shows his dark side, wait until Frodo's asleep to try to steal back his little precious ring, brother. So right off the bat, you have a combo that kind of encompasses the mechanical flavor you want in this deck. Dunedain Rangers combos with this guy, but only if you have a way to both produce and sacrifice the ring bearer. So you have Dunedain Rangers, three and a green for a creature, human ranger, it's 4-4. Four, four. Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if you don't control a ring bearer, the ring tempts you. These two pieces are central to this combo, but you need something that produces a ring bearer on landfall. So Rampaging Baylos does the job and is probably the best one. You want that in a landfall deck anyway, even if you aren't comboing out. You could replace that with Zendikar's Royal, make a 2-2 green elemental land on landfall, or the old Greensleeves Meryl Sorcerer. This thing's like 30 bucks though. Make a 3-3 Badger to carry the ring. Probably do a better job than Frodo anyways. So we'll go through some sacrifice outlets later, but you want free sacrifice outlets like Viscera Seer or uh, Carrion Feeder. Combine the free sacrifice outlet with this stuff and you're in business, dude. Take all your opponent's lands out of their deck, pay it off with Blood Artist, Poison Tip Archer, Vindictive Vampire, or Zulapore Cutthroat. Now that's the combo route and it's a pretty decent way to win a game. Aristocrats in these colors is pretty easy to do. Build a board state of tokens, sacrifice outlets and payoffs, and gradually drain the table. I've done so many of these decks. It's an established archetype that doesn't rely on combat. It can be very strong. You also want to be tempted by the ring as often as possible. There are about 19 cards that do that in these colors from this set, so let's highlight some of the good ones, brother. Remember as well, this commander has two triggered abilities that you're building around, so consider your Strionic Resonator. All right, man, let's get tempted by Goldberry. I mean, tempted by the ring. You got Call the Ring out there, one in a black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, the ring tempts you. Whenever you choose a creature as your ring bearer, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. This card does a lot right out of the gate. And if your commander's out there, you're getting a land on top of everything else. Then you have the one ring to rule them all. It's two black black. Chapter one, the ring tempts you. Then each player mills cards equal to your ring bearer's power. Chapter two, destroy all non-legendary creatures. Chapter three, each opponent loses one life for each creature card in that player's graveyard. Sauron's out there, he's up to no good as usual. Anytime you see a guy with an elaborate hat like that, just know he's probably somebody you shouldn't give your credit card information to, brother. Then you have the Inherited Envelope. Ever since I started playing Magic the Gathering, I always wanted a card that represented the male, dude. It's three generic mana for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Has tap, add one mana of any color. Looks like old Bildo, Bilbo Baggins just got his order in from TCG player, my man. Mana rocks are probably redundant in the stack, but it's a fine card. I like this card, Bombadil Song, one in a green for an instant. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, gains hexproof until end of turn, the ring tempts you. Who does this guy think he is out there, Mariah Carey dude? This guy breaks out in a song in the middle of my dinner, I'm asking for a free dessert, buddy. This guy's out there ringing a dong, and I'm trying to eat my fettuccine. 
Then we have Sam's Desperate Rescue. One black mana for a sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand that ring tempts you. Great card in a deck where we're sacrificing creatures all day. Your opponents are going to be incentivized to remove your stuff anyways. And Sam is out there terrorizing the streets of Mordor like an Antifa loose in Portland, brother. All right, then we can kind of delve in the Landfall and Lands Matter cards. There are staples here that are pretty great in this deck. Got cards like Lotus Cobra. Never pick up one of these beasts. Even if you're trained, it'll bite you right in the neck, dude. Drain your mana right out. Tireless Provisioner. Great card, dude. I didn't even realize it was an elf, but it got a nice looking reprint in Lord of the Rings Commander. If the Lotus Cobra is going to drain your mana, this lady is going to drain your bank account. Then you have Tireless Tracker. Two and a green for a creature. Human Scout, it's a 3-2 with Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a plus one plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. These two, they're tireless, right? They're doing CrossFit out there. They don't get winded very easily. You gotta keep up on the cardio, brother. Especially when the air is poisoned thanks to the Canadian wildfires. Oh my gosh, then of course you have Scoot Swarm. It's a no-brainer in any landfall deck. Scoot Boot Boogie all through the land, my friends. This guy and Spore Mound are pretty fantastic at putting out sack fodder and just maintaining the board presence to feed the aristocrats. And in these colors, as long as you're including sacrifice outlets and token producers, you can slot in cards like Pitiless Plunderer. This is desperately in need of a reprint. It's 10 bucks right now. Three and a black for a creature human pirate. It's a one four. Whenever another creature you control dies, create a treasure token. Shame to let good gold go to the graveyard. This guy is out there snacking on some bullion, dude. He combos with a bunch of stuff, which is incidentally also good in this deck. Phyrexian Altar and Ashnod's Altar are essential to any good Aristocrats deck. I'm kind of a collector of Phyrexian Altars. It's a pet card of mine. I have all four versions currently in print, and this was an $80 card at one point, dude. This was reprinted in Double Masters 2022 and is sitting around $19 currently. And Old Ashnod's got a reprint in Brothers War and is creeping up again, dude. It's under six bucks right now. Stick either of these out there with Pitiless Plunderer and the next guy I'm gonna talk about. The old reassembling skeleton, dude. Stick this guy out there with the uh, two aforementioned cards and you're in business with Pitiless Plunderer and one of the sack outlets. It's one in black for a creature skeleton warrior. It's a one one, has one in black. Return this guy from your graveyard to the battlefield tap, dude. You're just bing bong and stuff in and out. Pitiless Plunderer is also just a two card combo with Chatterfang, dude. This guy's a squirrel general. It's two and a green for a legendary creature squirrel warrior. It's a three three with forest walk. If one or more tokens will be created under your control, those tokens plus that many one one green squirrel creature tokens are created instead. Has black, sacrifice X squirrels, target creature gets plus X minus X until end of turn. So what you do is you activate Chatterfang by paying black and sacrificing two other squirrels. The squirrels die, triggering, triggering Pitiless Plunderer twice, creating two treasure tokens and two 1-1 one, one squirrel tokens. Activate a treasure by tapping and sacrificing it, adding black. Repeat. Resolve all Chatterfang's abilities, causing any number of target creatures to get plus two, minus two until the end of turn any number of times. Then you got the Pawn of Ulamog, dude. I saw this guy at a rave about four years ago selling some balloons full of an unknown substance. This guy makes creatures when non-token creatures die. This guy also works great with the reassembling skeleton and the sacrifice outlet. And speaking of Eldrazi spawn, I have used cards like Nest Invader and Kozilex Predator in Aristocrat decks to generate sack fodder, then reanimate them later for more bodies on the field. Those Eldrazi spawn are sneakily good in these types of decks. They trigger our commander and our drain effect, like Zulaport Cutthroat, and they also ramp us into bigger spells and reanimation effects. And as long as the card brings two bodies to the battlefield, you can combo out with Ashnod's Altar and Nim Death Mantle. This one was reprinted in Double Masters 2022 and was bulk priced. It's back up to three bucks currently. Nim Death Mantle's two generic mana for an artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus two, plus two, has intimidate, and is a black zombie. Not too worried about that stuff. But whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay four. If you do, return that card to the battlefield and attach this guy to it. In these colors, you also have a couple undying creatures you can use at least twice for sacrifice fodder. With the aforementioned Ashnod's Altar and Nim Death Mantle, you can sacrifice a young wolf or a strangle root geist or a butcher ghoul for two mana on the altar. It comes right back with a plus one plus one counter on it. Sacrifice it again for two mana. You now have four mana to pump into Nim Death Mantle. Infinite dies triggers right there, buddy. I can't find confirmation for this combo anywhere. It's not listed in uh, any of the combo sites, but I can't see any reason why it doesn't work. 
then you got the man himself, dude. This guy does everything. Yogg Moth, Thran Physician, 2 Black Black for Legendary Creature, Human Cleric. It's a 2 4. Has protection from humans. Pay one life, sacrifice another creature, put a minus one, minus one counter on up to one target creature, and draw a card. Has black, black, discard a card, proliferate. One of the best sacrifice outlets out there, this guy also combos with the two undying creatures and a card like Blood Artist to drain the table if you have a free sack outlet and draw you a whole grip of cards. For those that don't know, you can cancel out the plus one, plus one counter with a minus one, minus one counter. They just disappear, so you can loop undying creatures this way. You need a way to gain one life, but that's where Zulaport and Blood Artist come in. I love this guy. It was a $30 to $40 card recently until a reprint and Dominaria remastered. You can get that sweet full art for under 13 bucks right now, brother. So yeah, man, I kind of just rambled into combos here, but Smeagol seems like a competent Golgari Aristocrats commander with a landfall flavor to it, which I like. He brings a new combo to the table, and though it's a tad convoluted, it can be a fun to, uh, thing to build towards it. These decks are fun to have around, dude. Most of the time, it's good to have a way to drain the table outside of combat, and Aristocrat decks can be a neat little puzzle. The consistent ramp is also pretty amazing, and having that solid engine in the command zone makes for a very threatening deck. So listen, man, get out there and enjoy your Smeagles. This is Nikki G from Better Commander, signing off.